What's up everybody, it's Jake the Barber and I'm with my friend Scott at the Men's Club Barbershop in Philadelphia, PA. And today we're gonna do a skin fade and a beard trim uh, with a style top. Okay guys, I'm gonna start with my wall senior all, all the way closed. So it's a zero, and we're gonna put that initial line in. This guy gets a relatively high fade, so I'm going to take the first line a little higher than I normally would. I want to dip it down just a tad in the back to follow the contour of the head. So now I'm going to get a detailer, and this is adjusted. This is bumped up a little more than the factory setting, so I'm going to just take the rest of that stubble off and the remainder of the hair that's below this line that we created with our senior. All right, just kind of gliding, knocking this hair off. And our fade really starts here. All right. Just making sure we're getting all this stubble down to almost nothing. Because right after this, we're gonna come in with the foil shaver and uh, really bald his head out. I want to just brush all this excess hair off of his head before we go in with this so it doesn't miss any hair. So we're going to get our shaver and we're just going to go a little bit below what we were doing with the, uh, with the detailer. You don't want to go too high with this because this could leave a line that's really hard to get out. So it can be kind of hard to cut, but the best way is the feel check. So it feels good. It's bald. Next, we're gonna get our Andis Master all the way open. So it's on its biggest setting, right? And you wanna come just about an inch above that first bald line, right? So you just make our guideline here and you're flicking out. Whenever you're cutting, you wanna flick out, right? So that helps eliminate those hard lines that are hard to fade out. Just kind of flicking out. Go around the head. And as I'm doing this, I'm turning the chair with my other hand. It just makes my life a lot easier. After we have that guideline set in there, you just wanna go down just a little bit. Not all the way open, but almost. And you wanna go right below that line we just set and just flicking it out. Just kind of using the corner of the clipper. I'm not really going, I'm not like digging into the fade. I'm just kind of chipping it away. It's almost like you're erasing. And I like to keep one side at a time. So I don't like to keep spinning the chair back and forth. Saves a lot of time this way. You just kind of close your clipper as you go. Go a little lower than the last time. Almost all the way closed. The line's almost gone. I can still see it a little bit. You can hear it cutting. And close it all the way. All right, now that line is faded out. Go to my other side. Same thing. All right. Now what I'll do next is I'll take a two closed, so it's a true two, and I'll just go about an inch above where I made that first line. You want to keep the fade proportionate. So every step, I like to take just about an inch, all right, and I'll take the two all the way around the head, dropping it down just a little bit in the back, keep the contour of the head, and just flick that out, and it, that's going to eliminate any trouble about blending uh, the clippers to the shears. I'll put my one on all the way open and I'm just going to do that same technique I did at first where I start uh, right below the line with your clipper all the way open. So this is almost a two. This is a one but it's all the way open so it's almost a two. So I'm just going to go right below my two 
and just flicking it out. Staying on one side to make my life a lot easier. All right, close it just a little bit more. We're just going back and forth. You can hear the hair cutting. And after I do that, I like to take the one off, open the clipper all the way, and just kind of chip away in certain areas. If I see something a little bit more heavier, I like to just corner it. Just clean it up. That looks pretty good. You can always come back to certain areas, but you always want to keep it moving, especially in the barber shop. Time is money. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. One clip on the master all the way open, so it's almost a two, right? We're just going to go back and forth. And we're going to do the same thing on the back to meet both sides of the fade all the way open. just a bit before we move on to our next step. Now I like to do all my clipper work before I get into any shear work. So Scott likes his beard nice and clean so what we're going to do is we're just going to fade out this hard line into his beard um, and I really you don't really need any any guards or anything for that. Um, so what I like to do is I start with uh, my clipper, which is, this is a, a wall senior. It's pretty much the same thing as the Andes Master, but I like it because it's cordless for beards. So I'll start with, I'll just kind of really tap this area. I really don't need much. And I'm just opening it a little bit as I go down. And I'm using my corner. You never want to go in because you're going to take a nice chunk out of the beard. And this, this area is really sensitive and if you're not careful you can end up all the way down here. So you just want to stay up towards the top and just kind of opening it as you go down. And just using your corner, just kind of chiseling it away. You don't want to get too crazy with this. Don't ever overthink this area. And there you go, the line is gone. And you're just and now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to blow dry it from underneath. And then we open it up. This hair up here. After that's that. I'm just going to have a, a downward motion with my clipper. He really doesn't want a lot of length taken off. He just wants it clean looking. So to achieve that, I'm going to have my clipper all the way closed so it's zero and really carefully just going down on the beard in this motion. I'm just getting rid of those strays. Really not taking much off. And when I do this, I like to have a hard background like the floor here so I can see what I'm doing because if you just have open space it's kind of hard to see what's going on so if you have like a nice strong background you can really see what's going on and what hairs are poking out and what are Now that that's done, the beard's sculpted, so what I like to do is these little strays here. I, and, and I'm really careful in this area. You don't want to bring this all the way in, but there is some, some excess hair here. And I just like to get my detail here and kind of just clean it up. You don't want to go too far into the beard, or really at all into the beard, but you want to get the hair off the neck and really make it look clean. Now we'll get through this mustache. Watch your 
Hi, Scott. So what I'll do is, since his mustache is long, and he likes to keep some mustache, but not all of it, is I'll just do a clipper over comb technique. Comb it out. I'm going to get under there. Just kind of comb like this. You don't want to kill the mustache. Now the mustache is under control, like you take the hair off the upper lip here, and you just want to kind of draw it. Use your corners. And be careful guys, because this is a really unforgiving tool. Now Scott likes a sharp line on his beard, so what I like to do is I use a hairspray and spray it on the outer line of the beard and the cheek and what happens is this acts as like a dry shave gel and I don't really like to use shave gel if I don't have to and this is going to add to a very crispy uh, beard line up so I just spray that I'll let that dry out and then we'll go right into our shear work all right so we're just gonna texturize the top a little bit and we're gonna blend the fade into this area. So wet down the head. You don't really need to wet it down too much. We're just gonna take a little bit off. It's really long in the front. So we're just gonna take a little bit off as we go around. Just in sections. And this doesn't have to be perfect guys because we're going for a textured top. So it doesn't have to be completely one length. It's better if it's a few if it's a few different lengths. So I won't cross check check it because it'll help for the textured finish. Normally I would cut this way and then I would cross check this way, but in this case for this cut I won't. It also saves time, but it adds to the textured finish that we're trying to achieve. So now we're going to blend the clipper part of the haircut into the sheer part of the haircut. Now that we took the proper length off of the top, just want to comb this out, get it ready to be blended. We're just going to do a, a sheer over comb technique to blend this top. And there's not a whole lot that needs to be done here. As you can see, you just kind of just fading it in. And it's the same thing with the clippers. You're just doing that C stroke and you're fading out. You don't want to go in because you're going to leave a line. If there's any extra line, um, we'll go in with our thinning shears and we'll just kind of get that, that little line out. But until then, we'll just blend with these. So what we're doing now it's just our final touch on the cut. We're just going to blend this little area in here. And we'll kind of sweep through with the thinning shears before we style it. And uh, lastly, we'll line this cheek line up with a straight razor because that hairspray is drying or it's fully dry now and it's ready to be lined up. Just a few more steps left. We'll clear this line out right here. There's a bit of a, a, bit of a line. Um, and then we'll just kind of run it through the top so it helps with the textured finish. So we're going to comb all this down. We'll just kind of go through with the thinning shears. And you don't want to kill it with the thinning shears. Just want to tip, hit the ends of it here. You know, run it through. Same technique as the, what we did earlier with the shear over comb. You're just lifting it. And I like to pull away with the thinning shears. These are just sharpened too, so they're but it's not going to pull any hair. Alright, comb it down. Just a little run through. So last, 
I'm just going to line this beard up, right? That hairspray, remember we sprayed that on earlier. Um, and we're just going to, you know, pull the skin. And you're just going to get that motion right here. You want to keep your blade moving and be pretty delicate, but don't be too afraid. So I'm going to get that beard shape. So I'm going to see what I'm doing. That's why I like to use the hairspray, as you can see what you're doing. There you have it. We're just going to dust them off, give it a once over if we see anything, just clean it up. I get this neck hair off. Remember, we never want to leave the neck hair. That goes for underneath as well. Clean this up. There's some of these strays here. So I'm going to use a sea salt spray uh, to get that textured dry finish. Um, and we have here a Spice Citrus Sea Salt Spray by Beard Brand. Um, so we're just going to douse the head down with it. Just kind of working it through with our hands. Just going to dry with your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a matte paste and just kind of twist up certain areas. Hit on both hands. You don't want to focus too much on one spike. Just move it. And there you have it. Texture top, skin fade with a beard trim on my tattooed brother Scott. I'm Dave, we're at Gentleman's Rose Club and we are cutting Sam's hair today. What are we doing mate? Skin fade, yeah. like, relatively high to here. I've quite a lot of length taken off and I'm just gonna... Yeah, I remember last time, we, we did it last time, yeah? So you, you went from that kind of like uh, pulled back kind of quiffed look to a messy kind of chop. Yeah, quite a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, he's done a nice job though. The top looks really textured and nice. It's yeah. growing up quite nice. So you want to go a little bit shorter than that on top? Yeah. Okay, we've got these new clips today, which I found at a barber show. And they're good for just getting that out of the way. They're just Velcro. So you just literally push them on, and it just clips that fringe out of the way so you've got a clear kind of canvas to fade on. So we've got magic clips. I prefer the magic clip fading. I've done both now, senior and the magic clip, and the magic clip seems to be better for fading. We're going to start at the back here, and we're going to put our first guideline in. So we're going to find the occipital bone. It's around there. I'm going to drop a little, little line and we've got that just set off the zero so that it doesn't imprint into the head. And we're working around. What we're going to do now is that's slightly, the blade is slightly off for zero. I'm going to remove all the bulk. Cool. 
Yeah, I got You're not a guy that's badass. You got Chris. I think that's the one. The guy with the also tattoo open chest. That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, there is. Three more guys in the yard. Okay, now we're going to drop that down to a proper zero so it's properly clear. So that's a true zero. We're going to be taking it up from there, but not all the way to the top of the line. And we're flicking out as well. So what we want to do from this point is we're checking the balance, check that the lines smooth all the way around. Looks the right height. Have so we got detailer, zero gapped, which can be flicking out the very bottom of that. Oh my god, these shots here, right? Yeah. You got his head like that, look at Charlie in the background. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same haircut, mate. I know. That's <laughs> f***ing brilliant. You've literally got the same haircut I'm above the same again, haircut. Skin fade nation, mate. So, we're going to work out just the baseline now with the foil. We're going to take it up to about there. <coughs> and we're going to take it round. Leaving the same distance between that line and the zero all the way around. Okay, and we're gonna take out a little bit lower now on the zero. We're going down to foils anyway, but the foils, because the foils will pull the hair and it breaks if it's too long and it breaks my foil, yeah. So if I go that little bit, just that little bit lower, it makes a big difference on the, on the foil finish. And the reason I've done it like this is so that I can chip away into that with the, with the, zero, with the zero on this and then blend it with a foil. So that's just something that I started doing recently after a guy called Noah showed me how to do it. Noah, Bluestones108 on Instagram. He cut my hair recently, showed me that he was doing zeros a little bit different. I think we've got a bit of a problem at the moment in the industry that there's loads of barber shops, but not many barbers. Okay, so plan now is to grab the foil head for the Andis. These are good for just removing the bulk. They don't, they don't mess down about, smooth, mate. Yeah, go on. Rub your chin on that, mate. Like that. Yeah, I've started using these recently. Those Andis just aren't cutting it for me anymore. I don't know why that is. They just don't seem to be performing. Yeah, I might need just new Andis, just new foils on it or something. So as I get towards that line, I'm starting to go down and not up. So I'm leaving it slightly longer towards that. Now we're going to blend that to that. And we're going to start with uh, an open blade, so a zero blade on the foil. This is a very long-winded way to do a fade, but it's very smooth. So the result should be like perfect. Okay, you can see we're working that line out just with the detailer. And we're just going to drop in just downwards on the very edge of that line. Okay, so we have worked out to a zero. That 
is faded. Okay, so now we're going to grab a number two with a guard, and we're going to take out about an inch and three quarters above that line, all the way around the head. Right, so we've got a number one now, and the number one is closed as well. And we're going to put in a second guideline around an inch. So we've got a, we've got a one through there, a two through here, and a zero through here. So we've got to blend the one to the two and the zero to the one. So the next thing to do is grab a 0.5 guard. And I'm gonna work down on that line. First of all, I'm gonna put it into a 0.75 position. So it's, it's half closed. And I'm gonna start working away on that line there. Blend in the zero to the one. So we're going to half close that to a 0.25 position. It's blended there, I can see a little bit of weight here. And it starts from here and it goes about, it goes from about there around the head. So I'm just going to work that out. But I'm going to drop it down now to just off the zero. And this is just going to be for refining. So you're not going to be going back into that phase. You're just going to take out any little imperfections. Put your line around. See a little bit of weight there. And I can see something there. So I'm going to pick at that instead with the corner of this detailer and just break up that little bit of weight. So we've got one and a half guard. I'm going to put that in a 1.75 position. And we're going to go just slightly higher than that one and we're going to flick out. Okay, so we're just going to comb it through. We've wet the hair as well. So I'm going to comb the crown how it should normally sit. That will help me cut it in the direction. And it's going to be a messy kind of crop. So we're going to be looking for texturizing methods after. So we're going to take the top back section, we're going to be working forward. And we're going to go short at the back, longer towards the front. So just going to castle cut the top. And using that back section as a guide. So you're pulling up a section of it with your current section. And they should be angling towards the front. So you want to leave that front a lot longer than the back really, so that you get that kind of quiffy, choppy look. Otherwise, if you get too short on the front, it looks, looks too severe. Now we're gonna work the sides. We're gonna come forward again. And we're gonna pull from, we're gonna start at the crown. And we're gonna pull around. So the direction of the crown at the moment is, if you look there, we've got it combed out how it's lying. So we're gonna work that way and this way. So palm to face. And we're just working our way now all the way around, keeping our hand, keeping our hand in the same position all the way around the head. And that creates a nice even shape. Okay, so we haven't, I haven't cut that bit short there because I need that to give the front body. If you cut that too short there, you lose that nice uh, solid look through the hair. 
Right, now we'll just left for that fringe yeah. before we blend yeah. it. So do you want to go a bit short on the fringe? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah? So if you lean slightly back to me, I'm going to take the middle of the fringe and I'm going to castle cut. So that I get a nice choppy effect on it. That's a nice deep. Okay, so we've still got some blending to do on the sides. So that's not quite what it's going to look like. You're going to lose a little bit of hair off there and etc. But we are going to texture the top now. So it also helps as well on this kind of cut if you just pull up and just check that everything's okay. So it, although it should be even all the way across, there's parts that you leave longer. So I've left this longer here. So if I cut that short, the same as the other side, I'd have more of a quiff. I want this to come round. I want to keep that length there so that it supports that. Right, so we're going to texture up now. We're going to just pull sections of the hair. And we're going to twist it. And we're going to just partially cut the top of that, closing the scissor ever so slightly. This is going to give a textured appearance to the hair. So I may take a little bit more of that once I've blended it, okay? So don't judge it yet. So we're going to just blend the side so it's nice and flat. I'm looking in the mirror to see that I've got a nice flush line through that side. I don't want it to go in and then come back out at the top. So I'm looking for that kind of transition there. Key to blending with seven inches as well is you keep one blade still. So the bottom blade always stays still and you're only moving the top. That way you get smoother. It's better than doing that. And I can see that I've got to take a little bit of this out, just because it's not fitting the rest of the hairline. That's not So I'm keeping the same direction. I know that that's going to go up, you see. So I'm only looking to clear that bit of hair. And it's just made that a little bit less severe. We're going to start it with some tea tree salt spray. And we're going to dry that in. So we're going to work from the back, on a medium heat, we're just going to dry that in. And we're getting that quiff to lift, so we're pulling up and we're blow drying the base of the hair. How's it feeling, man? Nice length, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the key to this when you're styling it is you make the back a little bit lower yeah. and then pull the front up. Oh. Happy? Yeah, same. So I want the line on the top. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the skin fade. And the size and back. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And okay. if you can do a little bit. A bit down on top as well. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Sure, exactly. Okay. How cool. much short can I go with the force? Is okay for you? Yeah, yeah. Very close, right? Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, let's do it. It's a clipper. It's a it's an icon wall with customer's blade, so I'm gonna open it a little bit and I'm going to draw my first line under there, under here, 
we will go with the forest. I'm using a trimmer. Why am I using a trimmer? Because it's closer than the wall icon and it's more easier to, to cover the forest later there. As we said before, foils by wall, my magic brush for cleaning out all the hair here. Let's do it. Obviously here in the back part is a little bit more the space that I left because this zone of the head is the one with more density of hair. So I need a little bit more space for fade it up. That's why I left a little bit down. But anyway, I'm gonna fade it. I'm gonna blend it a little bit, even with the foil, with another technique. Blade open. I'm gonna take just pretty much a finger. With my magic brush. This month is going to be a nightmare because we're doing into the house. So, so this is like 0.4, not number 5. It's just a little bit less than the green guard by wall. That is the half. Going pretty flat with the blade, not too flat. flat. From the Blade open to blade closed. We have to blend all this line here that we created before. So, playing with the blade in this space between two fades. Obviously, we are going to create another line that we can see we are going to do the same work with the blade a little bit open next step will be with one and a half and we are going to blend it up to fade it up this part square following the head shape because he wants to grow this part here for comb it down a little bit as a proper sidebar so I don't need to go too much in that obviously as much as we can because we have to clean all this line here. Number one. Blade close, half, 0 0.5 guard. We are going to clean all this line up there. My mom lives basically with my sister uh, and her family. She, my mom lives on the ground. Mm. This part. Where did you study? Uh, right. Looks easy, so but after you started to move to London to work, then it's very, 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 very important. Because the line here is something that gives contrast to the haircut, and it's the first thing that you can notice. So, if something is not perfect, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. all these you can know this straight away. Now I'm going to blend all this part to here 
This is all the cum. The fat line that we have here. You're ready now. All the edges. Let's start with this one. We're gonna style his hair with a little bit of styling balm, three ranger in this case. You know, even on skin, it's perfect. You got something to drink? Would you uh, like a beer? I'm good, thank you. I'm sure. I wasn't sure what Happy with that? <laughs> so basically, okay, the crown at cool. the back. <laughs> Thank you so out. much. Because at the moment it's a bit too... Okay. Hello! Are you rolling? I'm Mahesh, this is the Gentleman and Rogues Club, and this is Will, and he's going to get a sh haircut. <laughs> Okay, Will, so you want a skin fade with the foils today and you were saying you want it slicked back but you have an issue with the haircut, so yeah, what's the issue? When, it, when it's dry, yeah. it kind of it hangs down a lot on the side yeah. and I don't mind it but it's just it's quite long so I'd rather get a bit taken off, off okay. the top so it doesn't hang down as yeah. much. So, you look, so this bit stays as it is but yeah. it's, it's these sections on the side. It's the sides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. There's a couple of little techniques we can use to, to stop that from happening. This is quite common, like with this style. Yeah. It's quite common because what happens is you start to grow it out and then actually it just gets a bit too long. You don't actually need it this long. To look like this, you don't actually need it that long. So we'll get to that in due course. So I'm just dampening it down to start with just because of, it just helps keep it out of the way. So because we're going to foil it, we're going to go straight in with our zero and then just tilt it out as we get towards the top. Still retaining like a little bit of the length through here because it's important we yeah, use we're going to use that to blend in the sides so we need that sort of little bit of that little lip of weight there just for now just for now so i'm going to leave that little bit because that's going to be our blending in area all right because i i don't want to go any higher with it because this is because this is this section here, we're gonna, we're gonna blend in so it sits better, all right? But what you're doing is you're creating like a little bit of weight here, almost for your hair to sit on, as opposed to going in too sharp there, all right? So we're just repeating on the same, same premise that we're gonna keep that little bit of weight. Use quite a big word there. Quite a word of the day, premise. You can use that as well today, Will. That's your, that can be your word of the day. I want you to make sure you use that at least once today. Yeah, I'll try and put that in somewhere. If you can, that'd be great. You're a good footballer, aren't you, mate? I am. He is a very good footballer. I'm away this weekend, actually. That's why I'm London America. Or if, you're, if the people that are watching this in America, they would say 
Sokor. They call football the balls that you can hold in your hands because that makes sense, doesn't it? It's like table tennis or ping pong it used to be called whiff waff, didn't it? I don't know, I'm not yeah. that old. Are you saying yes, Craig? No, uh, it's Oh. So before we go on with the foils, we always go in with the detailers. It just takes it that little bit shorter and it makes it more comfortable. Going over with the uh, detailers, it just takes it that tiny bit shorter, ready for when we go over the foils. Because if the, the hair is too long when you're using the foils, it just pulls and then it's really, uh, really uncomfortable. So anyone that's used foils before and it's really tagged. Then it's probably because the hair is a bit too long. So we put the talcum powder on just because it just stops it from irritating the skin, the, this, the foils irritating the skin so much. It's almost like a, a buffer between the, the skin and the, and the foils. Like you would if you were, if you were razor cutting, you would use a, 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 a gel or you would use a foam. So it's, obviously it helps us to the transition. Will's, Will's skin is quite sensitive anyway. You can see already where I've just clipped it. It's gone, it's gone a bit pink here. So coming up with the foils, I know that it's gonna, it's gonna probably make his skin a little bit pink initially. But all that, all that is is just, it, what it does, it's just that's blood being just drawn to the surface of the skin. Because you're stimulating the skin. So we've gone in on the sides, just tapered them in slightly, but left that little bit of weight here, just on the sides there for this top section to sit on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it down the middle. And now this is what I used to look like in the early mid nineties. This is how, this is how I had my hair in the mid nineties. And I thought I was Keanu Reeves from Point Break at some point. I, I want to be I want to be Keanu Reeves from Point Break. That's who I want to be. Okay, so we're going to leave the length through the front, and it's shorter through the back. So we're going to follow this line. And I'm pulling it away from the head because I want a little tiny bit of graduation in the hair. I want it to look quite so soft line. I don't want it to be a really hard line. And you've got quite a long section through the back here as well, Will. I'm gonna get rid of some of that if that's all right. Okay, we're going to we're going to use a, just the razor to soften up this haircut now. As Will was saying that it's really heavy. What well, you will? You're saying that your haircut just feels really heavy, or your hair feels really like just flopping down. It grows quick. So this will this using this technique. We're just going through the ends, and we're just taking off just the very tips and it just softens up the haircut so it doesn't look like a really sharp haircut on the ends. And what it doesn't do, like 
I mean, if you use the thinning scissors, what you do is you create more straight lines through it. So this will just lighten the whole haircut. And I, you know, from the taste point of view, like if you know, some people might not like the style, the shape, or but it's, that's not the point. The point is that if you've got this much hair on top and you want to retain it, but you also want to be able to control it. Sometimes it's not taking the length away, sometimes it's just taking the weight out and that will help to control it. You know, sometimes you need the length actually because it sits better. If you go too short, it just stands up. And that's what people do, they go, oh, well, we'll just cut it shorter then. Well then, all you're doing is creating another problem. So with the length, I can do that and it, and it will sit back. But if I had cut that really short, it just stands out. So we'll keep the length, but we'll take the weight out of the length. And he had this really long section here, which uh, got rid of that really, just to e just easier for him to manage really. So these side panels that drop down too much, just taking the weight out of them. Okay, so a little tip. So do you, do you, do you dry this yourself, or would you just leave it natural? I leave it quite natural okay. and do it damp rather than yeah. dry it myself. Yeah, so towel dry it, put a little bit of product in it. And then even if, you've got, even if you haven't got time to dry it all, just do the side bits. Okay. So what I would suggest is you go in and up that way. Yeah, sorry. So what it does, that will support the rest of your haircut. Okay. All right, so let's show you. So you go up, so you're drying this up. You're just using the nozzle to, to, to direct the hair. And while that's warm, that's, you can mold that. And then as it cools down, it will just cool in place and it will just sit and dry in place. And then you can use the cold spot on the hair dryer and that will help just keep it in place. So even if you haven't got time to dry, your, dry all your hair, yeah. you know, just do the size just to sort of like and that, and that will stop it from falling back as well. So the top you can just run through with your fingers. Do you see what I mean though? It, hold, it holds back much it nicer. Feels lighter, it feels lighter. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, as I said, the trick is really retain the length or take away the, the weight. Yeah. Soften up that very bottom area just with a texturizing scissors. So a little bit of pomade. That's the area that you want to hold the uh, hair, and then we'll run it through the rest. Nice man, really good. You happy? Charlie at Zero Wooden Roads. I own a pub and also a financial advisor. And uh, in coming for these guys for the last few months. And um, I keep coming back for some reason. So, what we're going to do with Adrian's hair? We're going to do a, a 0.5, probably about midway to the temple. And we're just going to blend our way up. Probably going to stop the clippers about here and then scissor cut to blend these bits into the top. And then maybe around the edges, do just a very light zero, just to taper it in at the neck. So what I've done, I've got my, uh, my wool, wool clippers, and I'm just starting off with a 0 0.5 guard, closed, and I'm just gonna hold it in reverse, and put in my line. The reason I'm holding it 
back to front so I can get that a little bit closer and I can just pretty much like pencil draw in my line. I know for a fact that this line I'm just drawing is obviously a 0 0.5. So above this line, I've just got to fade out. As I go around to the occipital bone, I've dipped down to go around it. Now I'm going to angle myself back up and realign myself with the temple. Just got my point 0.5. What I like to tend to do with beards is I like to have them in a point. We'll be doing a beard trim as well, so I'll get out the cutthroat razor and I'll just line that up. I've now swapped over to my guard one, uh, fully close still, and I'm now just going to hold it at like a 90 degree, like that, and I'm just going to flick, flick the line. What, holding your clippers at 90 degrees, what that basically does is that it makes it a little bit longer, just very slight. So if I held that flat, that is actually shorter than that. The reason I want it that little bit longer is because it's going to make it easier for me to blend out this second line that I've just made here. Sweet. So now I've done that, I've actually gone back to my 0.5 guard now, and I'm going to fully open it. So I've now got two lines. I've got this very faint 0.5 line that I drilled in earlier, and now I've got this one, one line that I've flicked. Having this fully open, actually maybe a little bit close, I'm going to hold it flat, and I'm going to flick away the rest of this line. Keep the skin taut, just to make sure I really get in there. The only thing I've got to worry about as doing this is I make sure I don't push too high. If I go too high, I'm going to hit this line and it's just going to make all the hair short. I don't want to go that high. As I flick up, I actually kind of, as I'm holding a flat, I kind of U, I, 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 I U it, like that. Yeah, man. We just left with one line, now we've got to get that one out. I'm actually going to go for just no guard, completely closed, and get out my wall comb. What I know, the reason I do this technique is if I hold this flat, this is a grade one. Very similar to what I did before when I flicked it. So this is the same length as that there. If I dig it in and then slowly angle it out, the hair's going to get longer. The more I angle it, the longer it gets. So I'm going to take out rid of that weight. The reason, uh, reason behind me keep going over the same section is because every time I may, I'm going a little bit higher and I'm angling my comb that little bit more. So, clean off, a little bit higher, clean off. And you can see here, that line has now slowly faded out, whereas here where I have not been, my line is still there. So line, and then this is where I flip over comb, slowly disappeared. Instead of going left to right, I'm now going up and down. This is just to make sure I really get in there. Get those fine individual hairs.
again, just like when I put that initial 0.5 line, I dip down, doing the exact same with my comb. So like here, I'm holding it pretty much in line. And as I've gone to here, I'm now actually slightly dipped down. That was just to fade around that occipital bone. So all I'm going to do is just like weight line here. Just because you're overcome. Just wet that down. Reason behind doing scissor overcome or over any other technique is one, obviously, personal preference. And two, I feel like it gives it a softer edge. So what I'm going to do is use the fine teeth of my comb and I'm going to keep a static blade. Basically all that means is I'm going to keep this blade here, the one that's hold it up by my ring finger. So I'm just gonna put my thumb in and just do that. Keep it nice and static, nice and controlled at that pace. The reason I'm only using my thumb is I'm keeping nice and steady control. As I'm combing up the head, I'm slowly pulling my comb away from it. So well, now that I've scissor overcome, I've actually, you can still faintly see there's still a weight line. The reason I've left that there is so when I unclip the top, and uh, I can pull them both together and I can connect the sides to the top like that, like so. Before I move on to the top though, if there's any impurities on the, side, on the back and sides, like there's some random weight lines, if you look closely, some around here, I just like the holes, the scissors flat to the head like that. Obviously I'm going to move his ear because there's a slight line there. Hold it flat, I'm just going to point cut it. The reason behind this is because it's just breaking up that line. Sweet. So now we're actually blending the sides to the top. So you can see where I scissor over combs and I left that a little bit longer. So I just need to connect the shortest piece to this longest piece. Sweet blends it together. So that weight line I did leave, it's now gone. Yeah, I thought that too. Same on the sides. Shortest point, longest point. Just connect them up. Normally I just whip out the clippers, just buzz cut it, in and out. But obviously the camera's on, you love the camera, so... It's been following you everywhere today. So what I'm going to do is start off at the back, just work my way forward, taking sections. Pick up the side where I connected it, shortest point. And now the top is officially connected to the sides. Just because it is quite curly hair. I do like a bit of point cut. Though. You do like a bit of point cut, obviously to get some texture in there. But I'm initially going to club cut, just so I can connect the sides, get a nice baseline. Don't forget the point cut. Oh, I won't point cut. I'm actually over directing the fringe now. I'm pulling it back. Basically what all over directing does is make it that bit longer. Still, still connecting it to my baseline. It's just that bit longer. Sweet. Now I'm gonna take the sections in an opposite direction. So now I've got my shortest point there, and this is the very front of the hairline, this is the fringe. I will actually be point cutting this. The reason behind me point cutting is just to add some texture, and I don't want to take it too short, not on this fringe. 
He's got a massive, massive forehead. You don't want to show that. Yeah, don't like that. Don't want to show that. Now that we've taken it down to the desired length that I choose, we're just going to now actually texture it. So this is where I'm point cutting. So before I club cut it, just to get my baseline, normally people would point cut it just to add texture. But I wanted to make sure I got that line first, and this is how I'm going to add texture. Just comb, I'm going to point cut. As I go in, I'll do it slower. I go in, and I only close the scissors as I pull out. I basically like just feathers the hair. It's not going to leave massive missing chunks of hair in his head. And all the hair that I've been cutting off, you can see it's just collected in my comb. You can just Yeah, I feel like. Yeah. It's on camera, you're getting that. I'm finger drying you. I'm finger drying you. It's just a natural, messy hairstyle. Nice and easy maintenance. And you can see where I point cut is. There's all that texture. Just random spikiness. Yeah, it's all about having the right hair and having the right texture. with the beard, we've got that point, just going to hold it on my clippers back to front, just line it straight up, I will be going back over this with a cut for a razor. I just want to make sure I've got my line in there first. Now I'm just lining up the throat. Now we're just going to trim up the mustache, basically taking it off the upper lip. What I tend to do is just comb it down with the fine teeth, turn them on and just hold them at an angle like that. Use my other hand just to stabilize it and just carve your way around the lips. As you can see, as I make my way to the arch of the lip, I like angle it down slightly. This is so they can eat food again without getting it all caught in his mouth. So now we actually trim the beard itself, get out my wall comb, anything with wide teeth really, and just comb it out ever so slightly. And every hair, that's not in line because we want that nice curved shape. I just cut back in. Again, I'm going to hold my hand just to stabilize it. Keep this blade still. I don't need to move it. All I need to do is move my thumb. So I've got full control. And visually, I can see what hairs need to be trimmed back. Change my angle just so I can get that nice curved shape. As long as my hand is perfectly still and controlled, he'll be alright. I won't cut his face, I won't cut his ear, I'll be alright. The reason I'm using scissors instead of clippers is I can stop it, but I've got full control. If I use clippers, I've actually got to turn them off and I may not even turn them off in time and he may have a chunk out of his beard. Whereas scissors, full control. Pretty much treating my scissors as if they were clippers. I'm constantly changing the angle of my scissors, 
due to just a comfortable hold and to get that nice round shape. Lovely. So now you can see I've just got rid of all those random flyaways and I've got that rounded shape again. It's just a cooling gel. Get it around the hairline. The bit line. People are still working on finding another supplier. So depending on do I get the supplier to have that up with them, I don't know why I'm not going to trade yet. I'm working on a tail of furniture. Well, I've got eight, my mentor is my tattoos. He's been teaching me. And then as I was getting the stuff, yeah, I just like, he showed me obviously the process. I just like to flick out that hairline. Just tapers it a little bit. Um, press it obviously. 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 <laughs> That'll be fifty dollars. <laughs> What's up, guys? Big Chris down here at uh, Beard Brand Barbershop, Austin, Texas. I'm here with Joel. It's gonna get a crazy, crazy short haircut today, and we've got a special buddy in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I think we're taking a lot off. <laughs> um, That's what I've been told. Yeah, I don't know how much. You tell me, but oh, dude. I think go super short on the sides, and then uh, we're gonna go as shorter, as short as it gets, man, all the way down go. to the baby bottom smoothness right in through here. All and right. uh, I heard number one on top. If, if if that's what if that's what Eric <laughs> wants to do, we're doing it. Let's go, I'm for yeah, it. I'm for super it. duper short. It's gonna be super duper super duper short. Um, for the beard, how are you feeling about the length and the chin, man? I I like the length. Could be evened out. Uh, open to to playing around with something new. Okay, right on. I think we'll keep most of the length in here. I mean, it's super bulky in here, mm -hmm. especially in the jowls, man. So. We just reverse fade it, dude. Throw okay. a fade on the cheeks, tighten all this stuff in, and then put the length in the chin. That'll be the longest on this one. Cool. Yeah, man. There's a good joke right here. Bam! Didn't say a word. How long have you been in Austin for, man? Like a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. Where were we at before this? Uh, I was in... I was in San Diego. And then I was in... I was kind of traveling, so... Right on. I was like nomadic. We did that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That'll be $50. <laughs> So did you move out here to further pursue your comedic aspirations? No, not as okay. a, something I do to keep myself entertained. Um, now I moved out because of like, people like that guy and yeah. a whole bunch of entrepreneurs in Austin and uh, California is California. Yeah, man. So Austin's a good spot. I didn't mean to let you see all that. That's usually the part where I turn the chair so you don't nah, see all good. the... I <laughs> have to see how the sausage gets made. No, I, 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 think, I think Eric was like, 
Yeah, working on this uh, this YouTube channel. I think it's gonna work out. <laughs> I gave a whole presentation on it, so. Yeah. And we're like, ah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Do we got a new product coming out? What is it? Yeah? What are your guesses? Guesses. Uh, well, I tweeted you my suggestion. Yeah, the CBD. Yeah. I feel like that's an easy. I don't know. I don't know how easy CBD is to make, but I feel like everybody's going to something. Oh, wait, like, we're getting vape carts? Is that what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so you got utility ball and, uh, like a hairspray? No. Like, how, how long until you come home? Stronghold pomade? No. How long until you like come out with your own like scarves? Scarves? Those dope. <laughs> like beard scarves? Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Uh, is it like a... It's a staple that all dudes wear. So it's something you wear, it's not necessarily a tool. So, I mean, it's, a, it's a product, a consumable product. Oh man, come on dude. He's just giving it away. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it. I don't know. Yeah, everyone, you don't need to wear it. Beard Deodorant. Oh, is it like... There you go. Sorry. Wait, what? Deodorant, dude. Deodorant? Nice. I got some. I'll go get it. Can you leave that at my station? <laughs> when you leave. Shorter hair for guys, especially... You know, it's starting to go away a little bit. Um, the tighter it is on the side, the fuller it looks on top, and then the shorter it goes and the tighter it looks on the side, just more complete it looks on top. So that's the biggest benefit to going super duper short when hair's starting to go away. Unless you want to be like me and have an extensive hat collection. <laughs> oh. oh. So since we've got a one on top and my clipper is, my clipper opens up to a one, just shy of uh, that number one guard actually. I'm just gonna open the clipper up little by little and kind of spin Joel around the chair while I do it. And that'll give us like the blurriest, the blurriest outcome. Cause that's, that's what we want. Kind of American fade. Blurry, don't know when it starts. But you know when it ends. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know barbers that'll do one side, they'll do the other side, and then they'll come back and try to marry it uh, back in this area. And um, I think it's just easier to lose your place if you do that. So instead of little sections on the side, just, you know, little sections all the way around the head. You, good question, man. So if you had a, uh, some flowy stuff back here, this is the occipital bone. This is the bones that sticks out the most from your head, and this is the whitest part of your head. And typically number one fade, I'm, I'm gonna take the fade a little bit higher. So I'll start, start my first line will be like coming right off that bone, if that, if that makes sense. And that bone, the bend comes all the way back here and it protrudes out here the most. And uh, man, I just, I just follow that structure all the way to back here and leave the line here. And if he had flowing here, to go back to what I was saying earlier, I might bring this line down a little bit. 
just so all this hair has, you know, has a place to go and it can still flow. Same thing is starting with the top. We got baby bald skin here, a little bit of trimmer work here. And then first thing I ran the clipper all the way open, then halfway closed, about halfway up. Then I'm gonna close it all the way. Kind of blend in with the trimmer work. And then I'll switch to the same guards coming down. I definitely, I mean, whenever I go super tight with the beard here, I'll come back in the jowls and kind of taper this, this section in two right in there. And then I'll come back and uh, we'll get rid of the more square shape and like try to cut it a little more rounder to, yeah, fit the contours of his face a little bit better. I mean, I'll clean up the chin a little bit, but a lot of, most of this hair I'm gonna leave alone today, man. of the beard and then get in with the chin. Oh, yeah. The guards have taken me as far as they can take me. How about the neck beard, man? Would uh, love it, hate it? Don't think about it. I'm cool cleaning it up. <laughs> So there's this Adam's apple right there. I'm searching for like one finger above that. That's where that's where this beard's gonna end. This line natural. I don't want to push it down too far. Still race all that all that time. 
fix to grow these things out. Even this up a little bit. Go ahead and close your eyes, man. I don't want any shrapnel flying in there. Take a look, brother. Oh. See if I got you handsome or if I just yeah. ruined your whole weekend. No, no, you're good, man. I like it. <laughs> nice, dude. Hey, stand by. I'll put a razor on it, too, man. Yeah, this is definitely how you can tell you came to the barber. Getting a straight razor over the years. Back of the neck. For, this, for these half shaves, it's the neck hairs that give us the most trouble. And they always grow in different directions. So I was putting on that lather there, I'm just kind of feeling for any weird bumps. Feeling for like his hair texture underneath here, which is pretty damn coarse. So when I throw on the hot towel, I'm gonna really press it in there. <laughs> This is too hot, you let me know, man. Yeah, so the hairs, typically the hairs uh, towards your chest are gonna grow up. These guys, sometimes they grow down, but with Joel, on this side at least, these hairs are all growing up. And then I just shave in the direction that the hairs grow. If you shave against, oh man, causing grown hairs, terra follicle. Just a bunch of bad Now if the guy's used to getting straight razor shaves, his hair and skin might be broken, uh, broken in enough or he's had enough to where you know, he's used to it. You can see right here the hair starts growing down. So I just want to come back and on your toes. exactly, man. All right, Joel. Got a cool towel coming up for you. close everything up and uh, cool off any irritation I may have caused. There's a little bit of juice, man. Let's get the one and only Beard brand. Spice citrus beard oil up in there. Yeah, don't be shy when you guys are putting this stuff on, man. Really work it all the way down to the skin. That way it won't feel like it wore out on you in the middle of the day. Right. Dude, how was that shave, man? That was nice. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Harry. I'm down there at the uh, Gentleman Road Club on Ashley Road. Yeah, yeah, I'm my to day today. Much needed, yeah. So, we're going to be doing a skin fade. And what was on the top? You wanted to take a little bit of length off. Yeah, and it's down to a zero on the sides, yeah? Do you, want a, do you want a low, medium, or high fade? I'll go for a medium. Medium, okay, cool. Right, we're going to comb the hair through first, just to see if there's any contraindications in the hair. Any lumps, bumps, moles, rabbits. 
Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to take a number two, and we're going to put in our first guideline. So we're going to remove all the weight around the sides. That's a closed number two as well, closed. You want to go about an inch higher then you're going to take your, <coughs> your fade, or an inch and a half higher. And you're going to follow that all the way around the head. Again, around this side, it's nice to comb the hair down, so don't, don't have it forward. Pull it down to where it's going to sit, because you're going to bring that over. And that way you're going, you're, you're going up with the grain on the hair instead of across the grain. I want to leave the crown in as well, so I'm not going to take this high or... And the fade's going to be a medium fade, but it's not going to be like an ultra smooth blend. So there's going to be a little bit of weight on the fade. It's almost like an executive contour, but without the parting. Right, we've got the zero. So we're going to put in a nice medium guideline all the way around now. He's looking for bumps in the head, so... Here he's got a dip here, so I know I need to take that either above it or I need to go below it or kind of on it so that I can, I can fade out above it. I wouldn't go down here because I know it's going to leave a lump in my fade. Cousin's husband's uh, airline pilot, Portisar Airways. Oh, okay. So you, get you get to go in the cockpit. No, I don't get to go in there. No one gets to go in there. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the bump I was on about here, look. So I've took, I've took it just above it so that I haven't got to fade through that because it kind of makes that hard to... Uh, it would put a lump in some distortion in the fade. Now, I don't want this to be straight all the way around either, so I'm kind of going to dip it on both sides and it's going to drop to there and then go round depending on where the occipital bone is at the back. So now we find the occipital, which is there. So I've got two decisions, I can go above it or I can go below it. So I'm going to go above it on this one. If the occipital was there, I'd be going above as well. But if it was a high occipital, I'd go below it. Everyone's different. So, this side here and this side here, I'll connect them in a minute. This is just working as a guide for me around this side now. So I've chased it round. <laughs> Another trick you can use for, it's normally hard to line up the lines on this side. So a lot of people use it by, do it by eye or they do it by marking something on the head and take it around to the other side. You can do this. So if you come around this side of the client and you get something to measure with, so say this brush, yeah? So then you can just put your thumb there and say, right, it's that high off the ear. So if you come around to this side, I hate ca catching myself on there. I can do the same on here. So I know that at some point my fade's gonna be to there. Just a little mark helps me work where I'm gonna go. And I can see it was dipped slightly, so I'd start like that. Or if he's a guy like me that, well, most people actually have one ear um, they do. further up than the other. They do, but it will always look off. You, I put the fade to that. Okay. So, otherwise you can mine see a clear like, difference, you know? Yeah, mine is oh, a big difference. Don't get me wrong, if someone's got like an inch lower ear, then yeah, you, can, you can't do that. But you'll be able to see that from the client straight away. So, this guy's got pretty level ears. Like it's, the fade's going to be pretty bang on all the way around. But yeah, if you, if you have got a, a clear difference, then yeah. You'd have to use a different way. But that's just a guide, really. Cool. So now we're joining this up. So this all looks a mess at the moment. It's all quite wonky. So we're going to start in the middle. This is done by eye. There's no, there's no trick for this. You've just got to have an eye for a, a, straight, for a nice straight line or for a curved line. But you've got to be able to just do that for kind of freehand. And it's just a little bit at a time. I need to take it a little bit lower on the zero. So the reason that is because the foils pull the hair if the hair's not too short. 
if your hair's not short enough. So I'm taking that just below that line there. And I'll blend that in as well. What do you want to do with this, buddy? Do you want to take it off or blend it in? Yeah. So we're going to just blend that sideburn in. We're going to use a 0.5 guard, open. And we're going to start just where the bottom of the ear hole is. I'm just dropping that down a little bit as I go. Taper in as I move up the sideburn as well. So we've got one and a half, so it's one guard, and it's going to be open. Just dust those clippings off as well. So we're going to put the one in first. So this is going to be our second guideline. Third guideline, because we've got a zero, a two, and now a one. Keep this bit of hair coming around here. Don't shave that off. Because that's that's covering the recession area, so if you take that too far back, it'll make the haircut look like it's too short at the front. So I'm only taking that up an inch there. I'm not going straight into that. Okay, now we're going to blend the zero to the one with a 0.5 guard. 0.5 guard. And we're going to have it half closed. So that's a 0.75 now. Don't worry about this yet because we're going to deal with that in a minute. So we're just working out this line now. So now we've got no, no guard. It's fully open, so it's just a 0.5. And so there's just a little bit of weight through here, look. This is going to remove that. I'm just flicking out the C motion. The hair's always a little bit thicker through the back as well, so you'll find it doesn't fade as easy as the sides. So you may have to drop it down to a zero, full zero, even on this kind of hair. Just through that back section to remove that last shadow. Yeah, I'm pulling the skin taut as well, because that helps me to um, reach the hair with the blade. There isn't really a quick way of doing this as well. I see like lots of videos for like three minute fades and stuff. It's just a long process and, it's, and it always will be. Until they bring in a tool that can fade for you, it's a process that's not, it's not quick. I'm going to drop just that little bit down. It might be that the hair's darker there, because sometimes that can happen as well. If you drop that to a zero, I'm just going to pick out with a corner. Yeah. Okay, now, normally with the foils, I would have foiled at the section where I use the andis to clear all the hair to the shortest grade. But because this is a medium fade, I'm only literally going to be, be foiling around the edges, so I leave it till last on this kind of cut. Because it lets me see where my fade is and where I'm not to put a line in. If I just feel that, I can feel it's completely smooth. And I can feel where I haven't been with the foil. So I know I need a little bit more there. So I'm gonna work with the crown first and just comb it nice and flat. So there was a little bit that was sticking up here, but the water's took it down. And we're just gonna see how it wants to lie naturally first before we cut it. Now, if the style was say probably another half the length of this. I clip it up and I do work in sections like that, but because it's quite short hair anyway, I don't feel the need to do that. I'm gonna pull that up and because the hair's going that way, I'm gonna cut it at an angle. 
and then I'm going to use that as a guide for my next section. So when I pull up, I'm going to use so I can see that I've got hair through there. Just the tops of where I last cut. And we're only working through that top section at the moment. And we're moving forward. Right here, I want to be really delicate. I don't want to take too much off here, so I will pull down there. And I'll work it back towards the crown this way. So I'm going to finish now with scissor over comb and then I'm going to blend it with, also with uh, a 20% thinner. It's quite fine hair, so you've got to be very careful how much you take. Okay, so we've got 20% thinner and a wide comb. I'm just literally taking out any, I can see there's weight here. I'm just taking it slightly above. I'm not going crazy with it. It's literally just taking out that bulk. If you haven't got these and you're trying to learn to cut hair, these really do help when you're fading or when you're trying to blend like zero to, to actual hair. Um, they just speed you up really. I mean, you can do it with scissor over comb, but you will be taking for a, a long, long time to do that. Around this edge here, I'm going to use the heel of the blade, not the tip. A lot of people struggle with that, so they end up trying to do this. Or backhand, which is very difficult, or they end up tilting the head back and trying to go back up. Or but if you just use the heel, it's a real easy way of just going around, and you can a couple of haircuts like that, and you, and you do get the hang of it. Okay, now we actually want that weight there, it's not meant to be a smooth transition all the way over. I want, I want a bit of weight on the edges to make it look like similar to this. So it's almost an executive contour and it's not meant to be a real smooth transition. Okay, what I'm going to use today is a little bit of powder. Now because the hair is slightly thin, this powder is volumizing and it does help make things a little bit thicker. I love the sea salt spray from Beer Brand, but it's not the tool for this. So I think Beer Brand should make one of these pretty soon. Okay. Okay. Cool. Happy. Always happy when I come out. Hi, I'm Dave, uh, with Matt getting his hair cut at Gentleman Monroe's Club today. So we're going to do a, just been talking, I'm going to keep it the same kind of style, but he wants to take it down to a zero on the sides, and we're not touching the beard today. Not touching the beard. Not touching the beard. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Just taking it a little bit higher around the back. Right, we're looking for symmetry now on either side of the head. So if you can face towards me, exactly. I'm looking to make sure that my bow lines are the same on each level. level. The comb of feeding it into the sliver like that. So we're going to three. I'm not taking out round all the edges here. I'm just going in at the top because they're going to work down the grades. So that's just a waste of time taking the three that low. Okay, I'm going to just drop this clipper. It, the, the guard is closed, the lever is closed, but I'm just going to take it back just slightly so that it doesn't leave a, an imprint in the hair. Now I'm going to work out an, a zero line around the edge of the hair. I'm going to hear him crying at lunchtime. I'm going to get pretty low on this. Much rather than stuff at five now. Yeah. Oh, it's good to see the back as well. Yeah. Ooh. I've got a lot of that. Yeah. I feel okay, mate, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, try something like that. Yeah, try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. You can't shake it up, though. It's good. It's fermented. Yeah, yeah. It's good to shake it. So we're going to be working this line slightly higher around the head as I go. This is just the first initial. Yeah. And then out tonight. South of George, doing Christmas. That's it. Where are you off to tonight? Oh, yeah. Uh, two friends, two of the 50th. And that's what I mean, love. Took that a little bit higher, just towards the end. Just how I felt it needed to be. I'm going to drop it down slightly at the back. The o bone's about there, so it's going to give me a nice bit of room there to fade up. I'm doing the same on this side. So, and this here, zero gapped. And I'm just going to take out the rest of that hair to make it a true zero. No. <coughs> no, I had this one a little while, but I've only just zero gapped the blade. I take it real, real short there. <laughs> I'm not going to taking it into the hair again, I'm just going below the, that first zero line. And at the moment we're leaving we're leaving that nice and square there because we're gonna taper that the side burn for you. But then that's what the Scots were saying, this is what I was talking about, fasting things with your body naturally changes in the evening because you're there. Yeah. Because that's just a natural rhythm of our body. Because we're light, we're light. Right, now we're going to work up with the grades. Yeah, we're not, we're not hours. 0.5 guard, closed, closed. Yeah. So I'm just going to take out well, about an inch and I'm flicking this in motion. A lot, yeah. So you've actually got 70% of your and you can see right, that's blending up already. Some hair is just so easier to blend than others. This is going to be really easy hair to blend. Some hair you'll be there for hours doing this. And then some hair you just does it all with a point five grain. Your brain sleep, which is when you're going to open the guard up, open the blade up to half position, so around there. That's going to take out the weight on the line. Yeah, so for half, half of your life, you'll be doing this. <laughs> yeah, so for half of your life, just lay down. Yeah, how good you feel like you're doing it. That's great. You just lay down. Uh, so you're going to have a one on the top. And you're going halfway into the 0.5 line that we've made. Again, just flicking out, not going too far in. These blades are really good because they're flat, so they haven't got the beveled edge on the teeth. So I'm putting the clipper flat to his head and flicking out like that. Right, we've got two. 
and we're going to make it into a two and a half, pulling the lever all the way back. And we're going to go slightly lower than we did with the three. And we're going to again flick it out, feed in clicker with the comb. That's just going to take, there's a little bit of a wedge, if you look down that line there, I can see that I'm making a nice shape there. And that's what we're looking for, shape. On this kind of haircut, you want a nice shape. You don't want it wedgy, or, and using your mirrors really helps with that. Right, I'm going to drop the dance for two. Yeah, I know sharks have to keep moving otherwise they die. Alright, yeah, you did round. Is that all fish? Yeah. Now that sounds like you're not sure. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. Do you know, say so dolphins, sleep facts, uh, oh, dolphins, so they, actually, they can actually turn off half their brain, so they sleep with one half that's, their brain. That's certified now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's two of you, that's me. Yeah. On this side here now, because we've got a part in, the hair's going to be sticking out further. If you look from behind, you see that's flush, and that side's sticking out further. So we're taking that down with a clipper comb, and a clipper with no guard on. Just take it slightly higher. Yeah, I think it's all yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's going to make that sit nice and flush. Anything that's sticking up like that obviously doesn't want to be part of this. So you need to make sure that you're not pulling too much hair down from the top. This side I'm going to work backwards. Pull up. Take it parallel to the head. I'm just going to snip just the edge. Pull up. Parallel to the head. Snip just the edge. I'm going to rinse and repeat all the way around. So the, the position of the oboe and the back of the head. And this side, we'll pull out and then cut forward. Yeah, you the top now. Yeah, you the fringe, I'm going to drop that down. <laughs> and that's going to let me know if I can work this edge. So that's where I'm going to take the length off. Straight across. Now I'm going to pick up my next section. I feel that I've got the other section of hair in my hair in my hands that I've just cut and I know that that's my guide. It's kind of an odd thing but you kind of feel what's got to come off on that side when you've been doing it for a while. There are ways to section this so if you're a beginner you'd section it, pull up and check everything all the way through. But I feel that's where it needs to come off and I can kind of feel it with my fingers. But that's, it just doesn't look right, that's not going to sit smooth, it's not going to sit flush to the head. Be very careful when you come around the back here, like if you take too much off it will stand up so trying to keep, it, trying to keep as much as we can right through there. I wouldn't even cut anything off that edge, that edge bit there, it's not long enough. You need that weight to hold that down nicely. Okay, now we've got the fringe. You want to leave the fringe longer than the back section, so it's going to take just the edges off. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah,
a seven inch scissor and a white cone. And we're just going to trim just around the edges before we start the top. Just keeping the blade flat to the cone. We'll just take out any weight. That's to just that edge, just that corner of that. I may need a little bit taken off. See, I can see there's something not sitting right there. Seems a bit lumpy here. So I'll cut across there. Pull the section that I don't want to touch. We'll pull up. I can just see there's something not quite right there. And that just sits a bit smoother. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to dress that. Feels good. Quite happy with that. Alright. I'm just going to take a streak of time. finishing. So if you go to our like the Just like that, man. A lot of that length is now oh, no. gone. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at this. Well, that's, that's insane. <laughs> What's up, my friends? It's Jesse here at the Beer Brand Barbershop in Austin, Texas, with my homie Evan, and we're ready to chop off all his hair. Uh, so, what do you think about doing today, man? Uh, skin fade? Yeah, I think I'll just go back to skin fade. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've been doing the, the quarantine hair. So. Yeah, for what, how long has it been? About it's, a year? Yeah, it's been a little over yeah, a year now. Yeah. And, was uh, the last cut a skin fade? Yeah, last so cut was a skin fade. Out from so. now, all yeah, natural. it's been all crazy. And then, you know, so. look good. Got the blonde John Wick yeah, going so. on. The blonde, the blonde, yeah. blonde Wick. Yeah. Blonde Wick. <laughs> but no, it looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's been all right. I've been trying to do the man bun thing, and it was yeah. just like, and I don't it's know. It's like, dude, I, I feel you, man. Shorter I think it's is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I might grow up my hair, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I keep it under hat anyways. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna rock it. And then, you know, now that barbershops are open and stuff, you know, you're able to totally. keep up with the cut again, right? Yeah, absolutely. So able to, to go back on the, on the path of, uh, yeah. of, the short, of the short fade. All right, man, and on top, just, you know, like, like pretty, I mean, you showed me like a finger like photo, but yeah. I'm a little slightly longer than that. Yeah, a little more fine. style, a little more, you know? Yeah, totally. So basically, the blends get a, go up high and around the around the corner of his head we're not gonna have too much of a shelf it was totally just quarantine i mean this is my first haircut since then and i've never my hair's never been this long in my life so this is it good enough hair texture to where i can knock the bulk down just like this instead of having to go in and clipper over comb it out of the way for i mean you can do it however you want but for me it's this is more satisfying so I, i'm having all the fun here I got my three blade on right now because that's that's the biggest detachable blade I have and it's pretty safe for blending like this is all jagged here now it'll be refined later so I'm just going in with my free my three blade to set the foundation because we are going to go down to skin um, so I could ride this uh, three blade right off the parietal and it's still going to go shorter than that so I would clipper over comb and scissor over comb and before quarantine I was getting skin fades I had a I had a guy back home and I was going every couple of weeks, honestly, to get it cleaned up. Jesse, what are you doing now? I'm refilling the water. <laughs> what you do is uh, you uh, unscrew the cap and put the water in the bottle and then screw the cap back on. I'm just going to comb the hair into where it wants to go. And when the hair does get shorter, uh, I'm going to hit him with a hot towel because I deal with these transformations, you know, ideally uh, have a shampoo bowl 
massage the scalp, get the get the part out of there because the hair is so long, you know, the, the, the follicles kind of pointed that way and the hair got trained to kind of face outwards. Yeah. But you know, his, his hair, and the shorter now, he doesn't do that. And it only, it only takes like one shower. It's not like, you know, one, one year of a middle part and you can yeah. really undo that with a haircut in the shower and then the middle part will be gone. Yeah, my hair's so thin too. It's like, when I grew it out, it's just straight, you know, mm. so you have to figure out how to yeah. keep pushing off your head or whatever, yeah. I'm knocking off this uh, bulk on this ridge right here, just getting that blend um, to where I don't have to really do much to it later. I do, I'm gonna clip over comb everything I do, like this whole ridge, but with the detachable blade, the way it's shaped, I can really just rock it off and get most of that work done. And I have my two blade on, and uh, pros of using detachables is it just takes the guesswork out of an adjustable lever. Like I know right under my three, it's gonna sit, it's gonna blend right there, and you're using the shape of the head. Checking to see if the, the blade is if the blade is hot and the Oster logo on the side of your head. So you will step down to one and a half. I was trying to go every three, four days before I did shampoo conditioner because it just gets so like just loose and light. But yeah, I mean, I was just kind of styling it a little bit. I have like a, I actually have like a sea salt spray thing that I was trying mm. to do on it. Nah, I put my finger on it, man. I was like, Evan looks familiar, man. He looks like a, like a blonde Cillian Murphy. Listen, I live in Germany, man. And this like, and his mom goes, excuse me, sir, like an like American lady. And she's like, excuse me, sir, I mean, can we take a picture with you? You know, and send it to my daughter, like, okay. you look just like Leonardo DiCaprio. No. <laughs> no. I swear to God, bro. I swear to God. Let's see, do the eyes. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. <laughs> and I also am going to be tedious with this part of the fade. With how blonde his hair is, I'm almost operating like in the dark. Like I can put that bald line in and from the bald line to that short hair, it almost looks blended already. Like, but I know there's a huge gap between. That's, yeah, that's what everybody know. says when they come my hair. They're yeah. like, you gotta look at it like five times. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna do your normal flick out and close the lever as we approach that zero line I made. I'm working right above the zero blend, so the half guard just keeps me a little safe, and I could rake that. I'm not, uh, when I fade, depending on the hair, I can do guard, surgical precision, guidelines, um, you, can, you can do that, um, but I'm not, typically don't go that way. I typically, you know, use the same process, but I don't put in super hard guidelines a lot. If you don't put in guidelines, you don't have to take them out. Down with the shaver so you don't leave any super hard lines. That's how you blend it with the shaver right there. You go up, you, I mean, you put hard lines going up, but then you can take, it, take the lines out, knocking them down. So now this is, you know, clipper over comb action. Where we're really gonna rein in this ridge. And make this refined. And the reason why blends like this need so much attention, because when you're doing a shorter blend, you run the risk of, of the short hairs popping out. I might start cutting 90 degrees from the front of the forehead if I want to add more texture and more, uh, yeah, more texture up front. But we'll we'll see. We'll see after I get it cut down. I'm gonna slightly shape it and drop the length towards the back of the head. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And that's just done by angling my fingers. See how it's all sticking up here? That's that that's that middle part giving us that trouble that I, I told you, you know, it would give us. All right, now I'm going <clears> to <throat> dampen the hair more than it is. And just to help me out, I'm going to hit him with a hot towel. You know, that's part of the process, part of these, you know, transformations. It's going to be fine, right? Yeah. Just no sleep. It's really hot right now. Kind of. Oh. So you just, you know, give them a little massage. <laughs> massage those follicles. Yeah. Massage the scalp. Kind of remind it, you know, put it in its place. You know, just remind it, hey man, you go forward, not to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, <laughs> dude, I feel yeah. great. Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't really looked, but yeah, I feel good. Yeah. So no, dude, I you, you won't actually look till you get home. Yeah, uh, right, I know. I don't, I keep my clients so faced away from the Yeah, room. Yeah, right, exactly, um, yeah. But see, look, you already see how that, that hot towel trick, a little bit of heat yeah. with the blow dryer, and then, uh, you know, I'm still, you know, bang still a little too long. I still have to blend these corners in and then refine this blend. And after you dry it, you kind of see, you see more things. After you blow dry it, I usually, uh, I could have point cutted the whole uh, cut and the texture would basically already be in there. But I like doing, doing a little more custom than that. Um, so I'll start my texture when I, blend, when I do these corners. So now, now I'm point cutting, now I'm switching over. So I am gonna, I am tightening up the bangs right now. I will cut 90 degrees from the front. Uh, so I'm putting in almost, this is not exactly zero elevation. Um, what this does, you'll see it here after I finish trimming down these guys. So I cut the top 90 degrees up. I'm, I'm doing zero elevation right now. Nabbing these corners. And then when I pull the hair 90 degrees between the two, you'll see your guide, and that's where you uh, that's where you cut, and I'll just get a nice layered. Layered front, you know, easy, you know, salt spray, whatever. And now. Now when I lift up here, you have your guide. And so now it's not super flat and uh, just hanging straight in his face. It's broken up with a nice texture. Scissor over comb, really, really uh, smooth out this ridge here. So what's your typical uh, scent? What, what kind of, do you work alone? Yeah. What kind of cologne do you wear? Uh, it's uh, it's Dior. It's okay. The Savag. Or okay. The so a little bit crispy, but yeah. also is it like it's a one of the man ones. Yeah. So a little bit crispy, a little musky. Yeah. A little right in the middle of. Yeah. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's subtle. Then I already know, like you know, you go for our gold line scents. 
Yeah, probably four vices. I mean, what are your vices now, man? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, do you like uh, coffee, tobacco, cannabis, and hops? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that covers it, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna, you know, edge them up. Those are basically there. So now we have a smooth blend that's short and not sticking out. Just gonna do a little more bashing over here. When in doubt, bash it out. Take your blenders and just slap it away until it looks good. It's like a joke in barbering, but it's not a joke because it because it works. I mean, I could just do this all day until it, something comes, you know, until something until it looks like a haircut. Um, so Evan, how's it feeling, man? How's that? How's the hair feeling? It feels amazing. Awesome. I'm excited. It's gonna be a good summer cut. It's getting hotter. Yeah. So easy to maintain. Yeah. Um, in ways li literally easy to style totally, yeah. and literally if you want to come back in two weeks it would be worth it if yeah. you want to come back in six weeks that's okay totally. so okay. it's a li it's literally relaxed in like all sense of a haircut like this yeah um because it can grow out the fade can grow out the top can get a little more messy and you'll just start end up pushing it. Like right now it's cool forward right if you let it go five weeks it'll, you'll just be tossing it over to the side totally. once it starts approaching the, the eyebrows a little bit I didn't get my, I didn't get these puppies sharpened, so yeah, they're not they're not sliding like they used to. That's why they, that's why the slide didn't look so confident because I don't I want to keep them comfortable on it. I was probably pulling tugging them a little bit, but and now I'm just gonna do a little bit of medium to deep point cutting right down the center because I point cut the corners already when I was a. Uh, when, the, when I was tying the top and, and the side. Um, we're gonna hit it with some sea salt spray. Mm -hmm. See, even now you still, you still have this little split with the with the middle part but you know as soon as you shower it'll be a lot more directional uh forward but we did you know alleviate a lot of that and so now i'm going to go in and refine with a good a good amount of a uh, styling balm i'm going to just kind of lightly apply it. i'm not i have a lot on my hands but i'm not really rubbing it into your hair mm -hmm. i'm just kind of setting it into your hair See, something like that is what we, we could work for. I mean, how's it looking to you? Is that is that too long or is that yeah, enough uh, play or? I don't know. I think I think like what you're saying with it just sticking up. I don't know. I'd probably yeah. just kind of push it. Forward yeah, push it forward. Okay, you push it forward. Okay, like, I mean, but like, yeah, it's, it's I the mean, right that's length. where we're going. We're going for uh, the the messy look, and if that's yeah. the right length for you, that's it. Yeah. Um, like the sides. And, and, yeah, in terms of, and let me let me get the mirror for you. Looking good, man. That's how it used to be. <laughs> it feels good to be back. Honestly, it's crazy. Awesome, man. Yeah. And then, man, here's a sound bomb for you. And then you just, uh, you know, just mess it through the hair, and then it, it'll be a pretty good all-purpose, you know, product for you for the texture and to once it gets longer. But yeah, welcome to Austin, my friend. You're not gonna film this now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I got a reputation. Yeah, well, clip, clip is there. <laughs> All right, how are you, Leroy? You good? I'm fine, thanks, mate. You're good. What are we doing for you today? Short on the sides. Get off the top please and uh, tie the beard up. Down to a zero on the side or yeah, yeah, 0.5? Okay, and then coming round, so we're, so we're basically maintenance trim, isn't it? We're keeping exactly yeah. what we're doing here. 
Keeping all this weight to this one side. Uh, hard part on this side, put in with a razor. And then we will put in like a, a high fade all the way around and trim the beard. Cool. So we're gonna drop a one and a half on. I'm gonna to come to where the parting is. This is a haircut that was very prevalent a couple of years ago. And then it kind of, everybody started keeping a bit of weight on this side here. But you said to me that you wear a helmet a lot, don't you? Yeah. So he works on, on a building site and basically he's taking a hard hat on and off all day. So he needs something a little bit easy to live with. Uh, if I flap the top hair there, I can come back with the guard. And I can use that to remove any bulk at the top of the, the blend. Okay, when we get to the crown now, I'm going to need to leave some of this crown. So I'm going to follow the line that I've blended, that I've blended it to. I'm going to follow it around, I'm going to leave a circular shape at the back here. And I'm going to take that right up to where my blend line is. Yeah. I think a lot of people are training now. Yeah, and they're kind of right? spending money on that kind of stuff, you know, gym gear and... They're all going mad for the... Uh, have you seen the lumberjack shirts? Yeah, I've seen them, yeah. Yeah, they're all going mad for them. Yeah, they... <laughs> yeah, which is good. Yeah. So I'm going to put it to a two and a half position. I'm going to start blending into the top hair and then I'm going to connect it. We left that little bit of weight there, because this is what we're going to blend into. Sticking with the two and a half. I'm going to drop this now down to a two. And that's basically all of the work that I need to do at the top of the head. I'm only going to be working on the bottom of the fade now. Yeah, just a bit of a style mode at the moment, just keep going to the gym and train until they try and knock that back on you. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be very annoyed when that happens, aren't you? Okay, so we are now at a medium height with the zero. Everything else above that is going to be 0.5 and it's going to give the effect of a higher fade without having to blend to a really small space. So I'll, I'll try to do a higher fade, I normally just have a bigger 0.5 section and I won't take the zero as high as kind of up, up here. I'll just keep the zero around there and then have a nice 0.5 section around there, around this comb width. So I'm gonna, I've, again, I've cleared, I've cleared anything here that's gonna make my blend kind of bumpy or, or lumpy or hard. So I'm gonna go straight above that and I'm just gonna foil over any complication there so that from here to here is absolutely smooth. Okay, that's looking very smooth from the front to the back. So we're gonna move on, we're gonna drop our 0.5 in now. I've made the section as thick as the comb, basically. That's just a good guide, because it, gives, it makes your fade look higher but it's also smooth, so you're, bl you're blending into more space. 0.25, we're gonna be stretching the skin and just flicking out ever so slightly. And we're gonna work our way all the way around the head. Drop down to a zero, or just off a zero. And this is gonna be our last little flick out on this line. Get tidy up any blemishes. You can use the corner of the clipper as well. Okay, so I've got one guard on. It's in a 1.25 position. And I'm just going to blend in now on that last bit of hair. And this is where keeping that bit of weight round on this circular shape at the back helps because you're kind of flicking in and you're going to give it a nice shape. I put the 0.5 guard on. <clears throat> I've dropped it into a 0.75 position. And I'm just blending in that last, last bit of, bit of line you can see. 
and that would be from my one to my point five. Okay, I'm really happy with that. It's looking amazing. So we're going to drop this part in, and then we're going to work on the top. I'm cautious not to go too close to the uh, the actual hair that's longer on the head. I'm trying to keep it all this way. Okay, so we'll move on to we'll keep the part in with the blade working in a sec. So we're just going to wet the top now, and then it should only need a very light trim because we cut it around three weeks ago. It's more the weight kind of sticks through the side on your hair. Yeah. Not so much the top. So I'm going to take a central part in. And then I'm going to use that as a profile. And now I'm going to start from the front. I'm going to pick that up, decide how long I want that to be. And I'm going to graduate it to the back. This is important because it creates balance in the haircut. You can go through as well and cross check at the end uh, to make sure everything's bang on. But you want it to be—I want it to be even all the way over. I don't want to only be any long bits in it or anything I've missed. I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. And I'm following that central profile, which is there. That's the length. So I'm just going through the middle of here as well, just to check that everything's clear. Then I'm going to blow dry this back now with a little bit of salt spray. Salt spray! So I've got it on the highest setting for a medium heat. Uh, and now I'm going to blow dry the, dry the hair into two sections. I'm going to start from the back. And everything's going to work this way. The reason for this is because if you're trying to blow dry hair from the back and you start pulling hair from the front, it just takes so long to, to, to dry it. You start at the back, you kind of dry the section, then you move forward, and you keep taking sections, it's just, it cuts down on time. So this is important here. At the front, I want this to get a little bit of volume in it, so I'm going to curl it the, the other way, and I'm going, to, I'm going to heat that up. Whenever I turn that hair now, it should stand higher. I can set that in with a cold. So through this side here, this is my side now that I've really got to work to blend. Everything else seems to sit in quite nicely. So I'm literally looking to remove all of that bulk and just customise the haircut so that it sits flush to this one side. And that's starting to take shape really nice now. <laughs> so that when this top weight sits onto this, it's got something to sit on now. And it also means that it's not going to protrude uh, on, in day-to-day -day use really. Could have just stuck it down with some wax, but I think a cut looks better if it's if it can hold itself without product. And then the product enhances it. It's looking pretty sharp. I may take a little bit out the back, just freehand. This is OCD territory, this is mate. Blow it dry in, medium heat again. I think 
normally you keep a lot of length through the front and take the bulk out the sides. Uh, I think we'll be doing the same today. There's a little bit of a, a kink on this one side that kind of stops this side filling in. So I, I, I accommodate that normally and just try and cut the shape to just kind of suit it. Okay, so I'm going to set this length on the bottom first. Just took you to about there, well, that's great. Again, I've got a nice angle here, so I can just literally follow straight through and it will give it a natural fall when, it, when it's tilted down to its own, own length. So the hair curls under, underneath as well, so what I normally do around this side is I'll actually pull the hair out and I'll use my finger to cut that hair on because otherwise I just end up pushing it and it pushes itself under. So just to follow that nice hard line, if you aid it and give it something to cut against, it makes your life even easier. What's the routine then, mate? You blow dry it out in the morning or you just literally bang some oil in and no, leave it? No, unless I'm going out. It's yeah. Like just a bit of gel or something. Yeah. A bit of water, a bit of gel. Just call me. You're putting hair gel in this? Yeah. In the beard? Oh, no, no, sorry, not the beard. <laughs> I was going to say. Ah, no, no. <laughs> Leroy, out of all the times that you come here and you're putting hair gel in no, it. No, no, I'll do it here. Um, the beard just call me for every morning. Yeah. Every, day, every couple of days I'll put some oil in or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, number two. I'm going to start blending in about a centimetre below the ear. And I'm going to take the two off, open it up. I'm going to do a little trick here, so you tilt the blade up, it's going to be a one. And then I'm just going to blend in, reducing that angle as I move up. Mm -hmm. Use the corner of this to flick in as well, corner of the detailer. There's only a few hairs there that's going to hit, but trying to break that little line up. Uh, we may need to use the foil though. It's hard to go from foil to detailer without using the foil to blend. On the heel here. A few little hairs that are tidy up. I can see where my line is from the last trim. And I make allowances for this. So I want this to still look quite solid as it comes around. So I don't take too much off that. I may take just a few hairs. Again, this, is ch this just stops you changing like three yards. A one, a 0.5, back on with a 0.5. You can just work down from a two with the one, with no guard, just by changing the angle. It just speeds you up. Right, so I'm gonna work a little bit of these, I'm gonna work some of these strays off now, uh, using scissors. I'm not gonna use a detailer. Then I'm gonna line around the inside of the lip and the top of the lip. This isn't really taking any bulk. It's just moving out the finish. You can see from either side here that one's, one's, one's clearer and one's not. I'm looking for just a flat finish here. I want these stray hairs to kind of blend in. Has anyone ever asked you to play Santa Claus? Have you had that yet? <laughs> Every year. Every year. <laughs> ah, you got to do it for the kids, mate. The thing is now, the youngers are too clever now. Oh yeah, they clock it's it so, mate. They're so clever. Yeah, they clock yeah. it. As a what, an elf for later? Yeah. Sorry, couldn't come this year. They sent me. Sent me instead. Yeah.
So at this point now, I'm just going to line up with a razor. I'll take some shaving gel. And I'm going to apply that just to where I'm going to shave. We'll take a light application just here as well. Uh, shaving the head on the hair can be a little bit harder than shaving it on the face. So you need to make sure it's nice and taut the skin. Uh, trying to go against the grain as well. And then this line here, as I pull the skin taut, I'm going to use a straight line. I'm going to put a straight line in. And as it drops, it'll have a natural curvature to it. That is looking sharp. Right, dude, I'm going to whack your nose. And then I'm going to drop some products in the beard and the hair. Three, two, one. Oof. Some big ones on that, mate. Keen now. Beautiful. Oh, dude. Thank you. Thank you on that. Yeah. Old money. She ain't giving up, mate. Two minutes. <laughs> Persistence is key, that's what they say. It's like, it's like a dog's family. <laughs> that's it, you've lost it. Okay, it's looking solid.